I now look to Gideon Levy to close the case for the proposition. Hear, hear. First time in my entire life that I don't belong to the opposition. And this says something. Every, almost everything was said already, all the lies, all the propaganda, and also some truth. But I think that it's time to put an end to the masquerade. And the masquerade is going on now for at least 50 years. And the masquerade contains two assumptions which both are a pure lie. A, that Israel has intention to go for the two-state solution. Israel never had an intention to go for the two-state solution, not even for a single moment. It is really almost historical irony to see now official representatives of Israel coming and defending the two-state solution. What did stop you for 50 years to go for it? Why did you go for it? What are you waiting for? Why didn't you go for it? And if, it's, if this is not enough, anyone who builds one terrace in the occupied territories has no intention to go for the two-state solution, period. And there was not one single Israeli government who stopped for one day building those criminal settlements. And that's the best proof. <laughs> and all the rest is a masquerade. Now the second lie is that the one state doesn't exist. Ladies and gentlemen, the one state exists now for 50 years. The only question is what kind of state is it? Is it a democracy or is it an apartheid state? That's the only question which is still open. Those who established the settlements project declared it very clearly. We are going to build settlements in order to prevent the two-state solution. The state of Israel always supported this project officially, unofficially, by money, by political support, by military support. <coughs> Israel, entire Israel, not only the settlers, is part of the settlement project. And the settlement project has one goal, to prevent the two-state solution. That's the only goal of the settlement project. And obviously also some kind of real estate uh, 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 interests. <laughs> Nothing more than this. So to claim today that Israel is in favor of the two-state solution and to claim today that that's the only solution. I was a great supporter of the two-state solution for decades. Many of your arguments here were my arguments for decades. By the way, in those years, you were perceived as a traitor to be in support of the two-state solution. All those who speak now about two-state solution 20 years ago say the two-state solution is Auschwitz borders. Now, when the two-state solution is impossible, then they come up. Because they know that it will never happen. Now they come up. Even Netanyahu can say two-state solution. Why not? Even most of the Israelis will say it in, in polls. Why not? Because they know that this train left already the station and will never be back. Because nobody is going to evacuate 700,000 settlers. And without evacuation of 700,000 settlers, there is no two-state solution. These all kind of bentustans, all kind of other solutions, but not a real solution. Sorry. So, no, no. I need to solve here an occupation of 50 years in 10 minutes, so you'll take two minutes out of it. <laughs> Guys, it's not about peace. It's not about symmetria. There is no symmetria. Forget about symmetria. Don't speak about symmetria because there is no symmetria. I would even suggest that there is no conflict. Was there a 
French-Algerian conflict. There was a brutal French occupation in Algeria, which came to its end. And there is no Israeli-Palestinian conflict. There is a brutal Israeli occupation which must come to its end one way or the other. One way was the two-state solution. One way was the two-state solution. It's a fair solution. Israel did anything possible to destroy it in an irreversible way. And now we are left only with the other alternative. There is no third way. And the one state is now 50 years old. In the front of it, there is a democracy for the Jewish citizens of Israel, with many cracks. And now, with our new elected uh, defense minister, we'll have even more cracks, but we can still claim democracy. The second regime is to, its, to our Palestinian citizens, to what we call the Israeli Arabs who gain some kind of civil rights, but are discriminated systematically. And in our backyard, in our dark backyard, there is a regime which is today by far one of the most cruel, brutal tyrannies on earth, not less than this, and I know what I say, because I cover it for 40 years, and this regime cannot be defined but as an apartheid. Two peoples, two peoples live on one piece of land, one people has all the rights in the world, and I'm talking now only about the occupied territories. Two peoples share one piece of land there. One people has all the rights in the world, the other people has no rights whatsoever. It looks like apartheid, it talks like apartheid, it is apartheid. And nobody can contradict it, nobody who had been there. Nobody who is fair enough to look, go to the Jordan Valley, see the prosperity in the settlements, and then go and see the Palestinians who live there without electricity, without water, without any rights. And then tell me if it's apartheid, or you might invent it another title. This must come to its end. And not until the Israelis will be ready for it, and not until the Israelis will overcome all their fears and complexes and memories. This must come to its end because it's now a third generation of Palestinians who live under it, and this is unacceptable in the 21st century. And the only way to end it is to, ta to start to speak about equal rights. Because the settlers warn and the settlement project, as criminal as it is, not recognized by one state in the world, including Micronesia, the settlement project won in terms of quantity. 700,000 settlers, as I said, irreversible. So now we have to discuss what is the alternative. And the alternative is a new discourse of equal rights. And then I want to hear from Israel what is the answer of Israel? Why not equal rights? Because we are the chosen people? Because God ex a, a, a promised us something? Because we are better? Because we deserve more? What reason can an Israeli official give to lack of equal rights on this piece of land? And we have to get to the core of it. And the core of it is equality. Not peace, but equality. And the day that the Israelis will re realize and recognize that the Palestinians have exactly the same rights as they, but exactly until the last inch, this will be the day that things will be solved. And then all those descriptions of civil war and this anarchy, and Ireland and the one state will not work. Try them. Give them equal rights, first of all. And you know what? By the end of the day, nobody can guarantee anything. Nobody can guarantee anything. Sure not. But when I steal your car, I am not in a position to put conditions for returning the car. First of all, return the car. And the only way to return the car is now giving 
equal rights to the Palestinians. In the last sentence, I'm an Israeli, I was born in Israel, I even perceive myself as an Israeli patriot. I care about Israel, I belong to Israel, I'm attached to Israel. And now the Israelis are horrified. One state is the end of the Zionistic dream. It's the end of the Jewish state. So first of all, I must tell my fellow Israelis, end of the Jewish state? Where were you? You could have your Jewish state in the 67 borders for years with a very clear Jewish majority if it is important for you. For me, it's less important. I don't know what does it mean, a Jewish state. I know what it means, a just state. I know what it means, a democratic state. I don't know if the UK is an English state or British state. I know the UK is a democracy and so must Israel be. And when I say democracy, it's not only for one people. It's not only until a certain geographic border. Democracy, like pregnancy. Either you are pregnant or you are not. No a third way, unfortunately. Either you are a democracy or not. And when you have this tyranny in your backyard, you are not a democracy, period. And for this I'm fighting, and for this, for this feeling of belonging to a just place, which I don't, of feeling of being proud of my country, which I'm not, for this, the only way, unfortunately, it's not a simple way. Don't tell me about the difficulties. I know them better than you. But the only way that Israel left open, the only way that Israel left open is to start to speak about democracy, about equal rights, about a one democratic state instead of a state which has this tyranny in its backyard. Vote for us. Thank you.